Uh, hi, I'm Grant Petty. I'm the CEO of Blackmagic Design. And we make video products for the film and television industry, so we do pretty much everything. We even do cameras and DaVinci Resolve, which is a high-end colour grading system for film and television. So we really have a wide range of products, and, you know, we sell over a million products a year. I grew up in a country town in, in regional Victoria and uh, was in an underprivileged area so the school would get grants occasionally for things and they had a grant for a full room of Apple II computers that shows how old I am. And uh, they'd also actually had a TV studio which had been put in years earlier. So we used to spend all our time in the TV studio trying all these different things and doing some of the worst videos around but we just had a lot of chance to play. We'd go in even before school, we'd go in, we'd stay back after school, we made friends with the cleaners. And then I got some work experience at the local TV station and the radio station. The TV station was a shock because the technology was complicated. And I remember looking at the monitor and one of the engineers was explaining something to me. And I remember just hit, it hit me, this industry is never gonna get boring. I mean, I remember it just hitting me. Like, this is it, this is what I wanna do because I'd already been doing it at school and then I got a job in post-production which is kind of the part of production where they do all the editing and the colour correction and all that kind of stuff. So I started working in that. But the thing that shocked me was how incredibly expensive the equipment was. Because I had a million dollars easily for the smallest thing. It hit me one day that the publishing industry actually had a lot of software. And they were doing the same kind of work we were doing. They were doing colour correction and all these things, fashion shoots and all these magazines. I thought if I could get that software to work in television, it would change the industry completely and it would make it much more affordable so more people could do it. And so that was kind of the start of doing like our original products with capture cards and then we moved on to other things. We've had seven acquisitions we've actually done as well and we've improved those products. Like we've got bought DaVinci, which was a high-end Hollywood color correction system and we bought a switcher products, which is used for live sports, you know, where you're live switching between cameras and all this sort of stuff. And we've completely revamped those products. We introduced a range of digital film cameras that were affordable. So it's just been this weird journey where you just sort of take opportunity after opportunity you try to be as good as you can, and then when those opportunities pop up, it leads you to the next step, and we're here now. So it's kind of a long journey, but it's been exciting. Originally, we found DaVinci was for sale because we actually had a post-production company. We had one in Singapore, because you know initially the idea of it was actually to test our equipment. If we had a post-production company, we'd be able to install our own equipment in it, see how it worked, get the feedback, we ended up doing a deal with them to buy it and then got to work at really rebuilding it. When we bought DaVinci, they were delivering literally all the computers, the monitors, a lot. Like it was just insane. Like that was how things were sold. They had sales guys who sold these massive systems that are over a million dollars. You know, DaVinci was $350,000 for the simplest one, $800,000 for the top one that was used on film. So my thinking was if we could get computers to do that work, that would be a good thing. And we had some interesting tricks on how we did it. Like we used the computer to do a lot of the work that normally would be on hardware, so the hardware was as simple as it possibly could be. And now the question is, why is it free? Our thinking was that we need the TV industry should have its own product. We shouldn't just let the computer guys take it. The problem is, is that people in the computer industry were moving to subscription software, and you see it almost used everywhere now. In fact, you pretty much can't get venture capital now. All the VCs care about is how many subscriptions you're getting, how, what's the rate of adoption of subscribers. You know, it doesn't even have to make any money. Because you know if you get subscribers, you can have them for decades. I don't like subscription software from that point of view. The, the red line that I can't cross is tying people's work up unless they keep paying every month. That feels like a mafia style, you know, payoffs to keep your business running. It just doesn't feel good at all. And the very core of everything Blackmagic does, every decision we make is to make our customers more free, creatively free. You know, it's empowering their creative freedom. That's the core of what we do. So you don't empower their creative freedom if you lock their work up in a tool. I thought if we made it for free and everyone could just download it and use it, it would create a large market, then some of that proportion of those customers will then buy it when they start to make money. So our job is to trick our customers into being financially successful. The way we actually make money is we sell control panels, like big color correction panels and, and, and capture cards and a whole bunch of different products that, you know, that work with DaVinci, edited keyboards and things like that. If you get good enough, you start sort of wanting some of those things. And then as you start to succeed, move up the scale, and then we start to get some payback. It's a long-term investment but it's not a mafia style shakedown of $20 a month or $30 or whatever these things cost. Just because it's not popular and everyone doesn't do it, doesn't mean to say it's not the right business model. The whole company focused on their first camera and it was the most minimal camera you could get. People joked and said it was a Fisher Price camera and they completely misunderstood why we were building it. We had DaVinci, and then the problem is all the cameras just shot video and they clipped the whites and they clipped the blacks and there was no range and there was nothing to color grade. But if you can't shoot in digital film, 
because the cameras cost 100 grand or 80 grand or whatever, then you've got no hope of bringing more colorists in. Even if the software doesn't cost anything, you still can't really do it because they just can't succeed. So we did all the things that kind of mattered, but it was just the most pared down camera you could possibly get. But that was the point. The people that understood it, they saw what it was. So while everyone joked and laughed at it, the reality is the people that understood and the ones that had the most desperate need realized what it was and then bought it. So it sold quite well because we were delivering a solution to something that didn't exist. We never had venture capital because nobody would fund this. I mean, no one funds a change in the industry. They fund something that's predictable because who would give this guy? He's got no experience, no skill, no education in business, no understanding of anything, and he's trying to make a product that no one's asking for it. So we could never get any money from anywhere, so we just had to self-fund it, which meant you did whatever it took to get a product to market. So one of the advantages I think that entrepreneurs don't understand their strength is if you come from a poor background or even an industry outside the industry you're trying to fix, you don't know anything, right? I have no idea what I was doing. Because if you know what you're doing, then you're not baking anything that's pushing yourself. So it means you can kind of move in unique and new ways and find information and really look around to see what kind of, like what is black magic culture? It's whatever we made it to be to succeed. It wasn't planned, it wasn't defined by anyone. It was just what we ended up creating to do what we do and it's still changing. Thank you.